Hey, I'm Jimmy from JimmyRose.me and Content Snare. And today you are going to learn what I think is a very cool workflow for being able to create customized scheduled workflows on Zapier and even recurring workflows where you can feed your own data into, uh, into those workflows. It's an incredibly versatile uh, way to recur workflows. So I'm excited to share this with you today. So some examples of this are like, if you want to maybe generate a report for 20 different clients on a certain day of the month uh, and have that emailed to them. So you could have a workflow set up in Zapier that does that and you feed all the different clients and bits of information into that through Airtable, which you'll see in a minute, and it will automatically uh, run out and send those reports to everyone. Maybe you want to set up recurring invoices or send some kind of project update emails uh, to all your clients, which you could do with this workflow. And you can schedule or recur pretty much anything that you can do with Zapier. It's all powered by this Airtable base that you can use as kind of like a dashboard to manage when our workflows are going to run. Now, um, I'm gonna run through how you set this up pretty quickly uh, because uh, you'll actually just be able to copy this entire base into your own account. So uh, I'll give you the link below this video. If you just click here, uh, once you're in there and you can click here to duplicate the base into your own account. And most of it should just work as is if you're using Content Snare, of course. So this, this example is using a product called Content Snare. Just to back up a bit, imagine uh, I'm an accountant and I need to request documents or information from clients on a regular basis. So, you know, we want to request bank statements from uh, this client. Uh, we want to request that every three months. Uh, so you can see that's the recurring setup there. Um, this one's a one-off, so we're gonna request, uh, it's a merchant onboarding form where we, we just wanna schedule that for this particular date. Uh, and then this is an individual tax return that we're going to do every one year. So that's, you can see there, that's kind of the setup. Uh, this part, no matter what kind of workflow uh, you're building, this section here, sorry, is gonna be pretty much the same. So you'll keep this from the base and you'll just be changing this bit here because this is all the information that gets fed through to Zapier. So if we look at an example of this, this is the workflow we'll end up building in Zapier later, which I'll walk you through. Um, but this is the action that we want to do on a scheduled or recurring basis, right? So if we look at what this action does, so we're gonna create a request for information in Content Snare. If you wanna come in here and just have a look what information you need to run this workflow. So in this case, we need like a request name, we need the template, we need what email we're sending it to, the name of the person, their company, uh, the reminder schedule. So this is gonna be a little bit different uh, depending on what kind of workflow you are going to run. So just each one of those is what we're using these columns for here in the spreadsheet. So likewise, if you wanted to use this as like a dashboard for scheduling and recurring invoices, you would come in here um, and go, okay, so what information do we need to send an invoice? You know, again, we need a person's name, the email address. We probably need to know um, the description of the item we want to put on the invoice. Um, you know, quantity, we might just fix it at one in the workflow, but then we need to know the price. So we need the person's name, email, company, price, and a description of what we're selling, like what the invoice is for, perhaps, you know? So you would come in here and make sure that's what your first uh, several columns were for, and then you would leave everything else uh, the same. So the way this works, this, this first view, we're calling it. So this is the table um, in Airtable, and then these are different views, so diff different ways of looking at the same data, essentially. Uh, so this first one is just saying, okay, th these are all the ones that are scheduled in the future. So this one, because there's no recurring period, it's just a one-off scheduled event. Any of these ones that are set with a recurring period, you'll see it automatically calculates the next date. Um, so, so sorry, just to back up again, this is, so this is just a standard date field with a time. Um, when you are doing these, I would make sure, just make sure you set the time zone as well. Um, you want to, I've just found it's a bit easier if you always turn this option on and select your time zone. This is the date you want to see, either with a recurring one, it's actually the date that you'll start. So this is the first one we'll send and then we'll recur it every three months. This is a simple number field. This is a drop down field with the options day, week, month, or year. Um, and these two are formula fields. So this one's automatically calculated if it's recurring. And uh, this one is basically just going to turn into a one show you the formula, but this will also be um, in the uh, below the video and in the, the Airtable base that you copy. It's basically just saying if this date is in the future compared to right now. Um, 
using a number of seconds as the measure. The reason we do that, um, this is kind of a workaround because typically uh, you could trigger something in Airtable based on like what we're going to be using is filters here. So we could say like, you know, is the send date after now as a filter, but um, Airtable doesn't only works on the day like that. So the date, sorry, so the t it doesn't really care about the time. So if you want to be able to send at pretty close to 9.52, uh, you have to do it this way. There is still a bit of a delay. I found around about five minutes because it doesn't continually process this formula every second. Um, there will be a bit of a delay, but once that turns to one, so this formula will automatically say, okay, it's time we've hit this date. It's time to send. That's basically all that's doing. That'll change to a one. At that point, uh, it will jump down into this view, which is a locked view. So if you want to make any changes to this, you'll just need to unlock it, but um, you probably shouldn't need to change these two at all. This one is just saying when you filter, um, so it's basically is the send time now one, um, and we haven't actually sent it yet. That's what we'll display. We'll display those in this view. So it should only be here for a couple of seconds, uh, usually, because then the next step is an Airtable automation which will process um, any that are in here and then drop them down into the trigger send. Once they're in the trigger send, this is what we monitor with Zapier. So anything that comes into this view will pick up with that Airtable Zapier automation and send off this request and then move it uh, into the sent view down here. So that's the, that's the process. It's, so each line item in here will just jump down one at a time until it's sent with the exception of a recurring one. So once a recurring one jumps down into here, we'll spin off a second record, we put it back into here. So we actually duplicate it and stick it back into here because we want to uh, send that again in three months, right? So we're just rescheduling it uh, in here. And that's all done through the Airtable automation. So it looks like this. Basically we're saying when a record comes into that to process view, we'll fire off this automation if it's just a basic scheduled one, so uh, if the recur every you know one month or whatever, if that's less than one or it's empty, it's obviously just a one-off scheduled request, not a recurring request. So all we're gonna do is update the record um, to say, yep, we're ready to send. That's the only change we're making in this part here. But if it's a recurring one, it's slightly different. Uh, so we're saying if the recur every is greater than zero, Yep, we will still update this one to send now, but we're also going to duplicate that record back into create the next recurring interval of that request. So the automation just says we're going to create a new record and we're mapping in all the exact same information. Unfortunately, there's no simple way to just say copy everything over. So you have to map them one at a time. You have to say, okay, the request name uh, is actually going to be the request name from the existing record. Uh, the templates, the same as last time, the reminder schedule is the same as last time, the client name is the same as last time. The only difference here is that the sends date for the next recurrence is what we calculated in the next date formula field. So if you remember, that's just up here. So every scheduled, uh, every recurring uh, request in this case, uh, we're calculating next date. So the one offs, we don't care, but a recurring one, this is the next version. So that automation is basically just going to create a new like in this case, you know, it's going to create a new one called Bruce's bank statements, um, where the send date is actually this date here. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, anything that's recurring, we're going to duplicate the record. Anything else is just going to fall through, uh, this process here. Now let's jump over and show you how to set this up in Zapier. So you create a new zap or a workflow, and we're going to trigger, uh, based on an Airtable event called new record. The key here though, once you set this up, you wanna make sure you limit the view to be trigger send. So anytime a record jumps down into this view, uh, that's when we're going to fire this workflow off, right? That's simple as that. And then we're just gonna map in all that information into whatever app we're using. So in this case, obviously content snare, we wanna send a request. If this was zero, uh, it's to send an invoice. If this was uh, generating some kind of report for a client, you know, you'd have an action here that to generate a report in whatever app it is, and then maybe a step to send that report to the client in an email. Uh, so you can do whatever you want in this middle section. Uh, this one's just really simple. We're sending a request in content snare. Like you saw before, we're just mapping in the columns from Airtable. So that's the request name. 
uh, the client email, the template we're gonna send, all that kind of thing. Uh, just know that um, depending on what app you're using, sometimes it'll default to um, here. And so this, what this is doing is selecting a template that exists in your content snare account. We don't want that. In this case, we want to map in that value from Airtable directly. So you've got to switch over to custom and then put that piece of data directly in there. You can go ahead and test that step if you want. I've, I've skipped it in this case. The final step uh, is to update that Airtable record to say, yep, we've actually sent that request now. You're going to choose Airtable as the app, but this time we'll use the update record event. And then when you're setting up your action, same kind of deal. You're just going to make sure you select the right base and table. And then in this box, you're going to go over across to custom here and map in the record ID that came from Airtable. And we're going to mark sent as one. So that'll actually tick the box back at Airtable to say, yep, that's sent. Um, and in my case, I also have a column here for the sent date, just so I can see exactly when this automation ran. You'll need a special placeholder from Zapier. So um, this is it here. So you can type this in manually or you can copy it from this article, but it's zap underscore meta human now with the curly double curly brackets around it. If you copy and paste that directly into this box, it'll show up like that. So then that'll put the date, uh, you know, when once we've sent that request in content snare, we're just going to update this record um, here, for example. So if we were to test this, it would mark that box as ticked. So it would jump down to sent and it'll put the date in there. So if you ever do want to go and have a look at which ones we've sent in the past and when exactly when they were sent over to content snare, you can see uh, in, the, in here. And finally, I'd just like to show you what you have to do if you want to customize this for another workflow like invoices or reports or whatever. There just are a few steps to it. But before that, if you want to learn how you can automate your business and get more productive, please hit that subscribe button. And if this has been helpful so far, hit the like button as well. I'd really appreciate that. The main things are, like I said before, you'll have to come in uh, and just modify the columns you are using here, right? So this needs to match exactly what information you want to pass through into that action in Zapier. So you'll need to create, um, basically duplicate this uh, table, call it uh, maybe in recurring uh, invoices, for example. This is where you would go and then make all, you know, you could rename this view as well. Most of this is gonna stay the same otherwise, but you know, you'll either, re you'll either change these columns, you know, you might wanna turn company into something else, or you can delete columns and add columns as necessary to match the data you need in Zapier. But the other thing you need to do is also duplicate the automation. Unfortunately, not that I, I don't think there's a way to also copy the automation across for a whole new table. So, you'll just have to duplicate this as well. And it is a little bit of a pain because you've basically got to set up the whole thing again. So um, instead of, um, you know, we're looking at the old table now. So we need to switch this over to the invoices one and make sure we're looking at the two process view there. Um, updating the record. Uh, so you'll have to change the conditions here as well. You basically just have to change everything over so that it matches uh, the same as this one. You know, so if we're looking at the condition there, it's if recur every is greater than zero, you've just got to replicate that uh, here on this condition as well in the new table. Kind of annoying, but yeah, you just have to do it. And you'll need to do that on the condition, uh, on this condition, both update records, and then uh, come back and do this one last, I think just because it's the most complicated. You'll need to map every single field over to the new one. So um, if we look at the invoices one there, see it's basically saying unknown field for all of these. So you'll have to delete all of them and, <laughs> and replicate uh, all of the fields again. So, you know, let's say it's an invoice name. So you say the invoice name is going to be uh, the invoice name from the previous record which comes from the uh, the trigger here. So you've just got to go ahead and do that for basically every type of field. Then remember the only difference here um, is that you'll want, when you choose send at, turn that to a dynamic one and make sure you pick uh, the next date, right? So everything else is a direct map except the uh, send date. And so once you've duplicated that automation uh, and that table, make sure the automation's turned on uh, then you go ahead and create your next workflow in Zapier, which, you know, instead of looking at uh, the first table, you're going to look at 
the trigger send on the invoices table in this case, right? So there is a little bit of work to duplicate this base uh, so that you can use it for other workflows, but um, you know this can save you an absolute ton of time. That's it. I hope this workflow is as helpful for you as it has been for me. If you want to get more uh, productivity tips and learn how to automate uh, different parts of your business, please hit that subscribe button below. Hit the like button if this has been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.